92.3 Amp Radio. What's up, Familia? My name is Shaboy of 92.3 Amp Radio with the beautiful Nina. What's up, guys? Uh, we have a very special guest today. We have Brandon Espinosa and Melanie Rodriguez. Brandon repping the Boogie Down Bronx. Yes. And Melanie <laughs> representing the Lower East Side. Mm -hmm. uh, but they are founders, co-founders of Milane Noir. This is so awesome. Uh, you guys will be hosting your first official women's wear fashion line launch event and showcasing your new collection inspired in Cuba during New York Fashion Week. That is huge. Huge, man. Congratulations, Congratulations on that. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So in sync with like talking the same and dressing the same. But before we continue, before we continue, we do have to say a disclaimer. This is not like a recruiting video for the army or the military. We're not trying to recruit you, although we support our military 100%. Of course, of course, of course. We did not plan this at all. We weren't like, yo, some big time New York Fashion Week designers are going to come in. Yeah. Let's dress army style. <laughs> Sorry, are you guys impressed? We, we are, we are. Love the love coordination is pretty up. impeccable. <laughs> if you guys need some extra models, you know, some dad bod models, <laughs> let me know. Dad Please. Mariah, I was going to say, Nina looks like a very young, thin, beautiful Mariah Carey. All thanks. <laughs> He's, staying staying on my, He's staying on my good side today. Thanks. <laughs> thanks. Well, you're military. I don't know what you'll do to me. Um, <laughs> thank you guys for hanging out with us. If you guys have any questions in regards to New York Fashion Week and about these awesome designers, how did this all begin? How did it, I know you guys have some on the personal side. How did that begin? <laughs> and then how did the professional side begin with this journey? Sure. So I always say there's Melanie's side and then yeah. there's the truth, right? Oh, okay. uh, Smart man. <laughs> but um, no, in all seriousness, uh, it all started salsa dancing. Um, so I am a proud Bronxite and we were up in the Bronx um, and uh, at an event and I was salsa dancing and Melanie approaches me um, and she's like, I, you know, I like salsa, I like how you're dancing, I would love to learn, right? Um, and so I was like, wow, no, I would love to show you and we need more people in our generation inspired by, you yeah. know, our culture, our roots. Um, and we just started talking. and. Um, from that conversation, we ended up speaking about um, her her craft and what she was doing for a living. Um, and she was like, oh, I'm a designer. I'm like, oh, you're a designer. That's wonderful. Um, can I see like the stuff you make? And I was like, wow, this is pretty amazing. You're very talented. Um, so I start scrolling through her website and I'm a business guy, right? Um, so prior you know, to, to meeting her, I had started a nonprofit with a buddy of mine. Um, long story short, I'm like, wow, I see potential here. How do we monetize this? Yeah. Uh, so I scroll through the web page and I go to contact and a form comes up. So I say, hey, if I want to get in touch with you, do I fill out this form and send it? And she was like, or you can ask for my number. <laughs> oh! Like where Melanie's head was at this whole time. <laughs> Meanwhile, he's like, business. Right? Yeah, right? <laughs> Monetize. Oh, no. So now let's get to the truth. <laughs> Melanie, how did it really happen? <laughs> I think that's pretty much the truth. Okay. Um, yeah, but men in the Bronx don't <laughs> lie. Come on now, <laughs> right? Yeah, and then and then we we dance the night away. So awesome, yeah. Melanie. Uh, tell us, uh, what age did you begin designing? From what you can remember, here in the Lower East Side. Yeah, so I actually went to high school, um, the high school of fashion industries, and I learned how to sew and drape there. So I pretty much picked up the craft at around 14 years old. And then when I went to college, I studied art advertisement, and there, that's when I realized, you know what? I, I want to start my own brand, my own company. I want to be an entrepreneur and run my own business. And that's when like, the idea evolved. I'm so proud of you guys because, first of all, being Latinos, first of all, being from the Bronx, Lower East Side, areas that are continuously growing, doing bigger and bigger things, but to be able to get involved into and make it into New York Fashion Week. Yeah, I mean, it's a huge accomplishment. That's Absolutely. the big leagues of the big leagues, you know? And uh, what is that feeling to you guys to be able to portray your work at New York Fashion Week? What does um, it mean to you? So I think, yeah, we could both answer this question. For me, it's a big milestone for our organization. And, you know, I'm a firm believer we haven't got this far alone. Um, we're only as strong as the people who have supported us. Um, and particularly on this journey, uh, my Aunt Joanna has been very instrumental to um, really giving us exposure and putting us on another stage that we wouldn't have had if it wasn't for her commitment and dedication to what we were doing. Um, and, and for us, you know, you look at the numbers, uh, you have people like Kanye West showing during Fashion Week and maybe two other people of color um, that are owners of fashion um, companies and then the diversity on the model scene is a whole different conversation. So for us, it's really invigorating. We're really excited uh, to be sharing this collection that's, you know, inspired by our roots, right? Cuba. 
um, and, and really highlighting our culture, but at the same time that there are, you know, black and brown people that are talented and can uh, create something that is beautiful and inspiring. That's awesome. Why did you guys choose for New York Fashion Week to show off and showcase your line that has to do and was inspired with your trip to Cuba? Can you tell us more about that, Melanie? Well, I feel New York City is a melting pot of cultures, and it was the perfect opportunity to really um, highlight Cuba. I think right now it's all the rage, and, you know, it's kind of been, um, uh, you know, just like quiet a little bit because you know, Americans weren't able to go there. And so we were fortunate enough to visit last March and it just opened my eyes to so many different things. And I wanted to really share that beauty and that, you know, inspiration with everyone. But as a designer too, I mean, starting so young, where you've been looking your whole life to find inspiration, for you to be in Cuba and, and know at that moment, what was the moment where you knew that this was what your line was going to be about? When we went to the beach in Cuba, yeah. it was so serene and beautiful and it actually gave me a moment to just kind of like step back and take it all in and, you know, realize like, wow, I'm extremely fortunate and this is such an amazing opportunity to be here. Yeah. So I think that was when it was really like a spark for me. Absolutely. And uh, I know you guys are world travelers and we actually have some of your guys' models that are going to be coming up and showing you some of their work. Um, but uh, some of this work that you're going to show here because the Cuba stuff we can't see till Friday, New York Fashion Week. Tease. But um, can tease. you give us a little bit of a tease as to like what kind of cuts you did, what kind of designs, what kind of materials you use, what colors you're using for the Cuba line. And then we'll go ahead and check out some of your work that got inspired from your trip trip to Venice. I'm starting to like their business model. Let's travel the I world do too. and design clothes based off of that. I know, that's amazing. I'm like, We're where set. are you going next? So, <laughs> tell us a little bit about the Cuba line. Um, what colors, what kind of designs can we see? Absolutely. So the, the Cuban collection was actually um, inspired by our travels there. Um, I actually interviewed Brandon's grandmother um, who lived oh. there uh, you know, throughout like the, the, the 50s and such and she, she answered some questions about what what women wore over there, um, you know, like what was um, kind of like the, the it fabrics and such. And um, I also, so I took inspiration from that and also from my travels. And so for the most part, there's a lot of reds, golds, um, obviously some ruffles, uh, and we're all about sexy yet sophisticated. So there, there is going to be some pieces that show some skin. So well, you got to, <laughs> you got to feel good about yourself when Absolutely. you're rocking it. Okay, so now we're going to look at some work from your trip to Venice. So what inspired you about your trip to Venice? And we got our first model, Olivia. Welcome, Olivia. Hi, thank so, you. so tell us about what we got here, Melanie. <laughs> so this is a two-piece. Um, again, sexy yet sophisticated. You can wear one or the other. Um, it's a nude tone, which pretty much goes with every skin tone. Um, and it's just all around comfort as well. And so when you say Venice inspired this, what part of Venice brought out this outfit and those cutouts even? Yeah, so when we were in um, Venezia, which is what we were, this... We were in San Marco Plaza. <laughs> we were in San Marco Plaza. We were... Um, basically on the gondolas and oh yeah so romantic oh, so romantic we actually shared it with another couple but it was so romantic <laughs> whatever it's kind of like being on the new york water taxi but a little more romantic <laughs> and it smells better right it, it does it does <laughs> but uh being on there and like seeing the water and and going through you know where all of the um the buildings and the architecture was believe it or not there was a lot of like moss growing and 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 the the, the colors there were so vibrant you, you you would think it would be green but there was reds and, and, and nudes and it was it was beautiful just like kind of like being in that water and, and seeing like all of the you know everything growing around it so so for instance this um, is, is it all being made here in New York City absolutely everything is handmade everything is handmade everything is handmade Who's by you is that you by me? yeah me and my team absolutely. what are you doing bro <laughs> <laughs> Dancing salsa in the background. <laughs> He's like, I just dance for you. I'm inspiring you. <laughs> yes. Yo te bailo and you make the clothes. Uh, that's it, right? No, that's awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. Olivia, now we're going to see another piece. Where, uh, we're going to invite Celia up to the stage. And this is also inspired on your trip to Venezia, to Venice? Absolutely. Please uh, explain, Melanie. Yeah, so again, uh, comfort level for the skirt. Um, I'm really big on bows, and so I kind of wanted to over-exaggerate a little bit. Um, and then, again, the sexy yet sophisticated uh, top, where you can, you know, we, we have it shown here with just a bralette underneath, but you can pretty much wear it however you like. I love that top. Thank you. What do you, you. like about it, Nina? <laughs> 
Well, I like that it is a turtleneck, but you got to have a little peekaboo going on there. I like <laughs> right, that it is a lot. A turtleneck. That's cool. Mm -hmm. I like that. That's really nice. And the cut. Awesome. Yeah. Well, well, thank you so much, Silly. I appreciate you coming on up. Now, for those that are watching right now saying, hey, you know what? I see myself uh, being a designer. I see myself being an entrepreneur. Um, what resources can you send them to or can you give to them uh, for people here in the tri-state area to be able to access and be able to reach the goal that you guys have reached as of yet? Yeah, I would say, so I'm more involved on the business side of yeah. things. And um, I would say my biggest piece of advice is don't be afraid to ask. Um, you really be surprised how many people are willing to help. Um, and it takes a lot of hard work and people want to see the commitment and the passion behind your work. Um, and I think this all plays into our brand and, and mentorship. Like I'm a product of mentors. Um, so it's very much ingrained in our brand, right? We really pride ourselves on the values of diversity, craftsmanship, and authenticity um, and communicating with those lenses and everything that we do. Um, so for us, we're, we're very ingrained in the community and we're looking for ways to reach back um, and help others. And so I would say the, the one soundbite here of advice that I would give to rising leaders and young people who want to start their own business, whether it's in fashion or something else, is don't let anyone tell you no. And when you do get a no, use that as motivation to keep moving forward. Um, because you got to believe in yourself before others will believe in you. Absolutely. Beautiful. 100%. There it is. Can you tell us a little more about dreamyard.com? Yeah, so DreamYard, um, my profession is in the nonprofit space, uh, helping um, kids through our city. And uh, I was fortunate enough to link up with the founders of DreamYard um, over on Washington Avenue in the Bronx. Um, and we hit it off and we were talking about our brand. They were really inspired um, by our collection being made in the Bronx. Yeah. Uh, so really, really pro Bronx here. And uh, we started talking and they were like, we have all these kids. It's the art center, right, in the Bronx. Um, we have all these kids very interested in fashion and they have a fashion program at DreamYard. Um, so we started talking and I was like, man, we should develop a way to collaborate and bring your kids into this work. Because I know what it feels like growing up you know, not knowing, right? Yeah. This, this unknown. Being exposed to certain things. Mm -hmm. Exposure, it's everything, right? And I'm a, I'm a firm believer in externships and the ability to see. Um, so we started speaking and um, long story short, we decided to create pathways and insights into entrepreneurship nice. for their young people. So they have Saturday classes there and we're in the process of developing something more formal. Um, but hopefully we'll have some of them join us on February 10th to That's see awesome. what it all looks like at the end of the day. That's, that's awesome. Unreal, actually, for those kids. What an experience you're able to give them. That's cool. So that's uh, dreamyard.com. Uh, and Melly, I want to get your take. What do you recommend for those people that want to be designers and one day want to be showcased uh, during New York Fashion Week? Yeah, so I'm definitely going to piggyback off of what Brandon said. And it's, you know, really utilizing everyone in your circle, um, supporting each other, you know, having your friends and your family there to, to push you. And again, don't be afraid to ask for help. Um, and, and one big thing. I always use Instagram. I find my models on there, makeup artists, and I've, I've built some amazing relationships through there. So, Absolutely. Continue supporting each other, especially people from the Lower East Side of the Bronx. Us, you know, here in the Tri-State. I think so many of the times um, once we're here, you see a lot of people making it coming from the outside in and coming to New York for those opportunities, which is great. You know, I'm definitely one of them that came from the outside and, and Nina, you yourself as well. But I think once you're here is also supporting each other to rise up together, Absolutely. Uh, especially our local talent. There's so much of it, you know, and uh, to make it diverse is definitely key and important. So we want to thank you guys for showing us and giving us an insight to what Milane Noir is. And you can visit your guys' website to check out some more stuff and make orders and all the above. Uh, what yeah, is your website? MilaneNoir.com, <laughs> right? It is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and follow us on Instagram, there Facebook. It it's M-I-L-A-N-E-N-O-I-R. Um, Instagram, Facebook, our website, MilaneNoir.com. Um, and yeah, thank you for having us here, Phil Boy. So and on the personal note, since Valentine's <laughs> Day is around the corner, so how long have you guys been dating? <laughs> um, and how often do you fight because of work? <laughs> Um, I'll let you take that. I think yeah. anytime they fight, Brandon just starts dancing. And then she's like, okay, that's fine. Right, and that's it. He has my heart all over again. <laughs> We've been together for two and a half years.
Yeah. Aww. So our, you know, we, it was funny. We were walking one day. It was like a, a rainy day and we're like, wow, man, business and pleasure. Right. Yeah. You know, and some people are like, how do you do it? You hear a lot, like don't mix business with like family and friends, like stay away. Um, and I think what we've been able to do very early on is establish boundaries, right? Like this is your arena. You play in the creative direction. You have full autonomy there. Yeah. I'm um, in the business, the operations, the finance of the business, right? Mm -hmm. So, and we both have the same common goal. And I think when you're on the same page of where you want to go, you're able to, to really put egos aside and pride aside and really move towards that common goal. So our, our, our tagline uh, that Melanie made for us, and I was like, wow, that was good, <laughs> is Aww. relationship goals. <laughs> I know. Taglines. Hashtag, Hashtag power couple. Yeah. Yeah. I don't what want is a tagline? tagline? It's, uh, she's like, I gave you a brand and you built me a business. Oh, that's that the most very true. sweet <laughs> Valentine's card ever. It is. But that's a true story. That's it your is. love story in a Absolutely. nutshell. And you know what? This is important to hear in here because I think a lot of times when you're in a relationship, obviously you trust the person who you're with completely, mm -hmm. or, or at least you would like to trust them completely. <laughs> you would hope you trust <laughs> them completely. I trust you. How cool <laughs> it is when you get to build to get something together. And, you know, but thank you for sharing what's uh, made it work so far. We wish you guys all the best. Uh, Milani Noir is the website, milanenoir.com. We thank you guys. We love you guys. You can catch us every morning, Monday yes. through Friday, 5.30 to 10 in the morning. We're hooking up with an iPad a day at 7.50. Yes. So you can uh, <laughs> log on to Milani Noir there. <laughs> yeah. And at 7 a.m., what else is happening, Nina? Uh, we're qualifying you for a trip to London to party with Ariana Grande and then automatically getting you $500 cash. And then you can buy some Milani. There we go. <laughs> you get inspired in London and create your own line. <laughs> there it is, the London collection. Awesome. All right, guys. On behalf of uh, everybody, 92.3 Amp Radio, Adorama Live Theater, and StubHub Stage, and the military, thank you for hanging out with thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you, guys.